Tabua, 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 Untuk terlihat kembali guna barang enam puluh lima enam bantu enam sen. Oh lor lima, lagi lagi susu dalam pasar. Untuk untuk terlihat enam bola FM enam bantu enam sen. Bola FM enam bantu enam sen. This is FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. In this bulletin, Australia calls on Fiji to stay in Pesa Plus talks. Agriculture Ministry wants more Fijians to plant kava. And police investigate alleged mail theft at Post Fiji. Australian government believes Fiji shouldn't pull out of talks on the Pacific Agreement on Close Economic Relations or PESA Plus. Minister for the Pacific Stephen Chiobo says Fiji could greatly benefit from the agreement, one that Fiji's Trade Minister Fayaz Koya is critical of, saying it hasn't delivered. He made these comments at the Fiji Australia Business Council meet today. Ellen Stahls reports. Fiji and Australia can't seem to agree on direction and outcomes of PESA Plus. Stephen Chiobo, Australia's Minister for Pacific, says despite teething problems, the agreement does aim to merge the Pacific into one market, which he says will reduce costs to traders and investors. The PESA Plus agreement will support Fiji in its economic growth and development aspirations. It's our view that Fiji has much to gain from PESA Plus. It will make a significant contribution to increasing foreign investment, to lowering costs, to expanding the services trade, increasing labour mobility and ensuring that aid is most appropriately targeted. PESA Plus is a regional free trade agreement between Pacific Island countries, New Zealand and Australia. Chiobo says Australia is committed to providing development assistance to Fiji and other countries to implement the agreement. I absolutely assure you, Australia takes into account the different levels of development the various situations, the various capacities of individual Pacific Island countries in seeking commitments on market access and in all aspects of negotiations around PESA Plus. Minister for Trade Fires Koya doesn't agree. He's openly said the PESA Plus does not provide binding commitments in labour mobility and development cooperation. The Fiji government also disagrees with PESA Plus replacing the South Pacific Regional Trade and Economic Corporation Agreement, or SPARTICA. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. A 52-year-old manager of Post Fiji has been questioned over the discovery of unclaimed mail at his farm in Tailevu. The items are believed to have been taken from the Post Fiji Logistics Branch in Ladala Beach, Nasinu. Police spokesperson Ananai Soro says another employee and a legal officer found the mail bags at the suspect's property. I can confirm a report was lodged at the Central Police Station um, after an employee uh, raised some uh, concerns about uh, uh, some missing uh, uh, items, uh, namely unclaimed mail. So upon their own inquiry, they managed to track down the uh, missing items at a, um, a farmhouse in uh, Taylor. And afterwards, and police were alerted and we, were also, we also went to the said property where... Post Fiji Chairman Lawrence Tikaram has confirmed that the issue has been brought to his attention and is being investigated internally. Kava exports are expected to increase significantly with the European market opening up from 2016. The Ministry of Agriculture is already preparing for this with work on a Kava bill which covers strategies and policies to cater for export demand. Savaru Tumboa has more. Kava Oyangon is one commodity that's expected to rake in the money following the lifting of an export ban by Europe. Permanent Secretary for Agriculture Ureya Wembuta says this is an opportunity for all Fijians as they are also working on a cover bill to guide the sale of this commodity. Uh, we are in the, first, in the process of uh, finalizing the first draft 
but uh, we need to get back to our stakeholders in terms of consultation. Uh, this particular exercise will take place uh, early next year. Uh, after the final consultation with all the stakeholders, just to try and hear from them uh, some of the improvements or way forward uh, suggestions on what needs to be captured or what needs to be deleted from the cover bill. Uh, once uh, that has been done, then we will take it through the normal government process. There is huge potential for big business in Yangwana farming or even for middlemen who can source markets overseas. Wembuta says it's high time to start planting to meet market demand. My major concern is uh, meeting the demand. So this is where I'm calling upon farmers and also other stakeholders to try and see how well we can produce consistently uh, for whichever market. Even for the U.S. Uh, alone, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, they are now moving towards what they call cover bar. So they have 30 cover bar already established in Sacramento in the U.S. And uh, they've said before Christmas there will be around 60. Yangon exports to Europe were banned in 2002 for fears of cover toxicity. That decision has since been ruled unlawful and inappropriate by one of the highest courts in Germany. Cover is considered helpful as a relaxant and antidepressant. Sabaira Tabua, FBC News. Finance Minister Aya Said Kayum says housing loans need to become more attractive to stop Fijians from going to money lenders who are outside the scope of the Reserve Bank. He says this is not only good for the economy, but for the banking industry as a whole. Finance Minister Aya Sayed Kayum has pointed out that in some countries, banks are required to have a certain percentage of their loans set aside for easy home financing. Although he hasn't indicated the same for Fiji, Sayed Kayum believes housing loans can become cheaper and more attractive. It means they are more dependent on going to financial services that are actually outside the scope of the RBF. So in, in order to mainstream them, and it is therefore in the interest of mainstream commercial banks and also government and also the Reserve Bank of Fiji, that we draw more and more Fijians into the mainstream banking sector. And that is very, very critical. The government is committed to enabling Fijians to own their own home. It has a program where first home buyers can get $5,000 grant and those building a house can receive $10,000. The minister says the inability to access easy financing traps people in a cycle of debt. In order to stop the cycle, obviously, we need to have a financial services sector where we draw people into the mainstream financial services sector. We make housing affordable. We make also availability of housing a lot more uh, readily available. But also at the same time, we are then able to remove them from that informal financial services sector or the ones that are not caught by that. Sayed Kayum has hinted that the government has had informal discussion with the Reserve Bank to increase home ownership in Fiji, but didn't elaborate on what the talks entailed. Razana Nisha, FBC News. A 39-year-old businessman of Mokani village in Tailevu appeared in the Nasori Magistrate's Court charged with murder. Rusia Telali is alleged to have caused the death of 29-year-old Suniam Bale Samambula, who was found dead in a Nasori nightclub over the weekend. Defense counsel Simeone Valeni Tambua made a bail application for his client, who was also asked to surrender his passport with two sureties and a bail bond of $5,000. The court will make a bail ruling on the 15th of this month. The 2015 cane harvesting season ends 2% short of the total tonnage crushed at all four mills. This has been attributed to the unfavorable dry weather conditions. Madhu Mbolaitamana has more on the story. Just short of last year's yield and the men at the helm of the Fiji Sugar Corporation says it is not as bad as they had anticipated because we've seen two dry spells. So with two years, the cane quality wasn't as good as even last season. But even taking that into account, and we made about 5,000 tons, which is roughly about, uh, I think it's about 2% or something less sugar compared to last year. So last year we made about 227. This year we've made 222,000 tons. With 2015 now behind us, Abdul Khan says farmers need to be smart about how and where to plant for the next cane season due to the prolonged dry spell. Well, you know, so what I'm saying to farmers, where there are pockets of good rain, go ahead and plant. But don't plant with, you know, where there is no rain because it's just a waste of money at the moment. But hopefully, you know, let's hope that by about January, February we get a bit more rain 
and if we do get that rain, it'll be a great time for us to actually get the planting underway. Apart from meeting the quota for exports of our raw sugar to the European Union market, Khan says there's also been much progress in value adding to the sugar exports in the regional markets. This includes supplying sugar to our fair trade partners in Australia, New Zealand and Germany. One of the things that we also need to increase is our revenue stream so that you know we pay more to the farmers and all the other industry stakeholders get more money. Rather than just producing raw sugar, we go into packaging as well a new branding as well. For so long we've produced sugar but nobody knows about Fiji sugar. Now they know that you know if it's branded sugars for Fiji it's quite unique. It comes from Fiji. Khan says repairs and maintenance issues and all four mills are now underway in preparations for a promising 2016 season. Madhyam Boletamana, FBC News. Still to come, fire destroys a factory in Lautoka. and I'm from Nandi and I love Mirchi FM. Hi, my name is Sony from Canberra. I love listening Mirchi FM online. I am Urmila Devi, I am Tawwa. I love the Shandil and Ashnil. Tawwa is locked in the Tawwa. We are here today, Mirchi FM is hot. I am Shelly in Tawwa Nausori. Mirchi music simply been dance in Nausori. I am a great fan of Mirchi FM. I am a great fan of Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM. It's hot. Welcome back. This is FBC News. A mid-morning fire in the heart of Lautoka's industrial subdivision was stopped from spreading to other properties through to the, due to the quick reaction sorry, of the National Fire Authority. The Lautoka upholstery warehouse in Thavakumbu industrial area caught fire at about 10 a.m. and the NFA responded swiftly. NFA CEO John O'Connor has stressed the importance of fire safety. He says a small fire during the dry weather could turn into a major inferno in a very short time. Staff from nearby businesses were able to exit safely as well to get out of the building. No one was injured. More than 900 marijuana plants were uprooted in an early morning raid at a village in Yale Kandavu over the weekend. This was confirmed by the police chief of operation, Rusiate Tundravu. Tundravu says Operation Sasamaki will be underway on Kandavu over the next few weeks in an effort to combat the illegal cultivation of drugs. Well, I can confirm that uh, our police officers uh, currently are in operation Sasamaki at, uh, in the island of Kandavu have uprooted uh, uh, almost 900 plus plants eh? uh, in the early morning grade in one of the villages in the Tikin of Ayale. So they will be concentrating in the um, islands of Kandab in the next uh, few weeks in our effort to combat uh, uh, illegal cultivation of uh, drugs uh, in all areas in our, in our, in our four divisions. Kandravu says Operation Sasamaki has also been conducted in Tukavesi in Dakandrove, Buda Bay, Natewa and Savusavu. The European Union hopes to promote human rights this month as part of its year of development. Coinciding with the global 16 days of activism against gender violence, the EU says it's serious about getting the message out. Akusit Pale reports. Promoting human rights around the world is one of the biggest priorities for the European Union. Ambassador to Fiji and the Pacific, Andrew Jacob, says the European Year for Development is a chance to focus on human rights, which is a topic of discussion in many circles. People are more aware of human rights. I think uh, the, the authorities are, are doing a lot to try to raise awareness of the, of the different issues. And I think since, the, uh, since, since Fiji returned to, to parliamentary democracy, you know, it's, it's been important to, to continue to work for a, a very healthy uh, framework uh, in which people can really enjoy uh, full human rights. Ambassador Jacobs adds the EU will continue to work with the various organizations to advocate on human rights issues and ensure 
cooperation is strengthened. Yeah, human rights, uh, definitely we, we have a big focus on support for NGOs, for civil society organizations. We're just about to sign six new grant agreements with a, a range of different civil society organizations or NGOs in Fiji, most of which really aim at strengthening human rights, access to human rights, helping to make people's lives uh, better. So certainly it's a, it's a very big area of focus for us. The European Year for Development, according to the EU, has been important for relations with Fiji. Akusita Tale, FBC News. People can get a snapshot of how effective the Pacific Women Program has been with the launch of the First Progress Report. The report shows that around 12,000 women have been able to access crisis support services like counseling, health and legal support. Pacific Island Forum Deputy Secretary General Andy Fong Toy says one of the key priority areas for most countries is violence against women. The program is focused on 14 Pacific countries, including Fiji. We have inadequate counselling uh, in many of our countries, but I think one of the biggest challenges that we do have is the, cultu the cultural barriers to addressing uh, violence against women. Uh, and so I think that's a place that we also need to start, uh, that we do need to change uh, the attitudes that, that we have where there is an acceptance of violence against women. The program is an initiative of the Australian government to support the Pacific Leaders' Gender Equality Declaration and is worth over $490 million. And on that note, sports is up next. Here's Jamie with the latest. Thank you, Zaki. And good evening in sports after the break. We hear from Ben Ryan ahead of the Cape Town Sevens this weekend. And War of Words continue in lead-up to Wild West Boxing Promotion. This and more coming up. I'm Duri from Nassinu Market. My choice is simple, Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Yvonne. I'm from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Sayandra, my name is Sunny. Only the Gold FM at Golden Point Resort, Rocky Rocky. Hi, I'm Anna of Nasinu. When it comes to a radio, my choice is always Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Anna and I'm from uh, Nandi. I love listening to Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. The Vodafone Fiji 7 side hopes to make it two out of two this weekend at the Cape Town 7s. Coach Ben Ryan spoke to World Rugby on his team's strengths and weaknesses ahead of the second leg in South Africa. Rahit Deo has more. The Fiji 7s team won the hearts of many with their sensational play over the weekend. But coach Ben Ryan is worried that the boys are getting a bit too cocky. I look at that the New Zealand team of about four or five years ago that went that 46, 47 game winning run. This team has the potential to do that, but based upon yesterday, that's not going to happen if they if they continue to just get a little bit carried away with themselves. So you know, I love a lot of our boys to death, um, and I will do a lot for them. But I think they need to have a bit of perspective. Leading up to Cape Town, Ryan is keenly aware that Fiji's image has fallen and he is having none of it. His goal this weekend, win the Cape Town Sevens and instill some humility in the team. Bird's eye and worm's eye, I think they're, they're all <laughs> they're, they're little worms at the moment. They need to get a bit of bird's eye view and see how perhaps other people might be talking about them now. Uh, I don't think it will all be in you know beautiful terms. Um, yeah, we need to earn a bit of respect off the field. On the field, Fiji has upped the ante. Nine players crossing the line on day one of the Dubai Sevens, a record in itself. But they moreover converted 24 out of 26 conversions and Fiji retained most of its kickoffs. That's technical work that we're doing. We're spending time on the ground, tons of time on catch, pass, tackle, on decision making at breakdowns in attack and defence. I just don't want any of that to fall apart by being overconfident um, or getting carried away with ourselves. It may have been a great start for Ryan's men, but he knows the other teams will bounce back. I think you're going to see lots of different finalists in the next nine tournaments. We, we saw you know, only three or four different winners last year, but I think we're going to see lots of last four and final two finals finalists that are going to be different this year. The Cape Town Sevens begins this Saturday with Fiji to play their first match against Scotland at 9.59pm. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. A reminder that you can watch the entire tournament live on FBC TV. 
Fiji Rugby Union Chief Executive Ranronro Tambo Levu spent his last day in office at Rugby House today. Since taking up the post in July last year, Fiji Rugby has achieved a number of milestones. During his tenure, the Vodafone Fiji 7 side won their second World 7 Series title and qualified for the Olympic Games. The TFL Fijianas qualified to be a core team on the Women's 7 Series circuit and have also qualified for the Olympics. However, Tambo Lebu says his best memory as the FRU CEO would be the Flying Fijians' performance at the Rugby World Cup. Watching that scrum against England, uh, winning that tight head and Fiji scoring a try uh, after that, eh? from that, from that try. That, that to me uh, uh, confirmed that uh, uh, we've arrived. Uh, you know, we've always been uh, there on the fringes, at times uh, perhaps not always fully uh, confident of our efforts. Tambole will resign from his position last month due to personal reasons. Players in the Fiji North Under-13 team that will compete in the Ultimate Fiji Football Cup hope to gain selection in the National Under-17 team. Most of its experienced players will be fielded for the tournament and the side is confident of a good outing. Josephine Avula has more. Braving the sun to get the formation right before game time, the team has set high goals for itself. Coach Vika Sandrao says the players have a lot of potential. We have some of the good, uh, good girls that are playing in my team. I know they are playing good in the, the last two tournaments and I know they, most of them will be, I know they will be in the national team. Having assembled and trained the team from last year, Sandrao says it's not easy to select the right combination of players. For some of the girls, I've been pre preparing them from last year, since they played in the last year's ultimate sports. So I think this year, will, I think they will do great. The players have been chosen from different villages in Tavua. So I want to play in the Fiji team, and uh, I want to go to places and visit places. My personal aim too is to become a national team, and I'm from a North team. Thank you. The tournament continues in Ba and Nandi tomorrow. Josephine Avula, FBC Sports. Middleweight boxer Siliveni Nawai is confident of a good outing against veteran Wahid King Khan at the Wild West Boxing Promotion this Saturday. In his last fight, the 21-year-old caused an upset defeating 2003 Pacific Games gold medalist Osea Nakanadangi. Speaking on his behalf, his trainer Chan Chal Baba says he has been preparing well for the past few weeks and is ready for the fight. We have had a lot of white can, gonna knock him out, whatever. But we're gonna win. The winner is here. It's the rising star for PG. The fight between Sylvain Inouye and Wahid Khan will be held at the Prince Charles Park in Nandi next Saturday. Meanwhile, heavyweight champion Peter Rongida will defend the Fiji heavyweight title against Napoleon Tamoe Piao in the feature bout. The Fiji National Rugby League, Australian National Rugby League and Fiji Women's Crisis Centre launched the Male Advocacy Initiative today. Through the Male Advocacy Initiative, NRL and FNRL staff will complete FWCC advocacy training with the aim of training and engaging male ad advocates in 52 rugby league clubs across Fiji. The Australian Minister for International Development and the Pacific, Honourable Stephen Chiobo, also pledged their support. Also part of the launch today, one of the fastest players in the NRL, Fijian Marika Koroimbete. I'm really happy to come back home and uh, to support this, and uh, especially for the young generation coming up, for the, um, not only for the, for the kids and for the um, men and to, to um, to respect women and um, to um, uh, respect women's rights. Together, the NRL and FNRL aim to engage members from rugby league clubs nationwide, as well as those from FWCC programs and NRL secondary school outreach programs. That's it from sports this evening. It's back to Jackie now with business. <laughs> Telecommunications company Digicel Fiji has received a draft of its special license for television from the government. 
If Digicel agrees to the special conditions and terms, it effectively finalizes the purchase of Sky Pacific, a regional pay television service. Digicel Fiji CEO Darren McLean says they have received documents, draft versions of the special conditions, which need to be agreed to before proceeding. He adds Digicel and the Communications Ministry are working together to clarify the conditions in detail and ensure that the intended transaction is in the best interest of all parties, including government, Digicel and Sky Pacific customers. Digicel made an offer to buy out Sky Pacific from Fijian Holdings Limited for just over $5 million, but other than a deposit of a quarter of a million dollars, the acquisition hasn't progressed. The Rotary Club of Suva East and Demorda Cinemas are collaborating for a fundraiser. A special screening of the new Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens, will be held on December 18th with all proceeds going to community projects. The event kicks off with a cocktail function from 7 p.m. to 8.30, followed by the screening. The tickets are $20 each, and that's inclusive of the cocktail and the movie. <laughs> showers was experienced over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands today. The trough of low pressure lies over Rotuma and extends east over Tuvalu, Samoa and northern Cooks. It was a hot Tuesday around the country, all centres crossing into the low 30s today. Brief showers are forecast for Suva and Savo Savo, while other centres should see fine weather. And the further outlook is for Thursday, brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, elsewhere isolated afternoon or evening showers. Our main stories again. Australian government urges Fiji to stay the course in regional trade discussions. Finance minister urges banks to make home loans more attractive and police investigate alleged mail theft at Post Fiji. Time for this week's poll question. We are asking, should Pio Kauai be guaranteed a spot in the Fiji 7s team to the Rio Olympics? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spade. Bye for now. Hi, my name is Liviana Valentine. I'm from Nandi and today FM rocks. My name is Ateva. I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Krish. I'm from Tava. I like listening to Big Breakfast. Today FM rocks. I'm Juliana. I'm from Nautaka and I like listening to Today FM. Hi, my name is Shelly. I live in Arere. Today FM rocks my drug and lollipop. Bula, my name is So. I'm from Navua. I like listening to today's FM. Bula, my name is Asilika from Rocky Rocky and today FM rocks with my flip flops. Today's hit music on Today FM.